it stopped and for some so-called unknown reason. But I think that it might have something to do with maybe some keywords that I happen to be using. Hopefully, if, if I don't use those keywords, it won't stop again. It would probably have stopped by now, but it hasn't. So hopefully it won't. Um, my name is Cynthia Ali Smith, and I am an anti-racism essayist and uh, novelist, writer, educator. Um, anyway, I'm going to try this one more time because it didn't stop. Seems like every time I mentioned that I did a 30 day stint in Facebook jail, it cuts off shortly after. This is my third attempt at um, presenting what I'm saying so far. So anyway, hi everybody who uh, may be joining now. Remember to share with your friends. I'm back. The doctor is in. <laughs> I was going for 30 days. And um, what was interesting about that, when I got back on, there were a number of my friends um, from this page who were telling me that they thought I had blocked them because I had been gone so long. No, you weren't blocked. I was blocked. I was in Facebook jail for 30 days until about 11.20 uh, yesterday. I see that I have some people who have joined and how are you all? I'm, I missed a number of you because um, I, although I tried to uh, so, uh, uh, click on you know the friendship for a number of you, some of you thought it might've been a hoax and didn't respond. Do respond uh, because I, I am a recidivist. <laughs> I'm always in Facebook jail. So when you see something coming to you from Cindy Smith, know that it's me. And it is my I am in Facebook jail account. Okay. But I am back. As I said, this is my third time attempting this. I'm hoping that uh, Facebook doesn't shut me down again because twice so far it just stopped for not, for and gave and says unknown reason. Check your browser and all that kind of BS. But whatever. I'm back. I will be saying hi to everybody on that list in this really short time. But what I'd like to do now is just briefly uh, talk about a, an S, uh, do a really short essay because I really just want to get my feet wet again. Uh, on my formal page, I had a number of um, people who were responding. And then when I was gone for that month, I had like, I think it was like tens of thousands of people who were actually responding to the posts and things. And now it's down to about maybe a hundred or so. So that's what happens when you try, when you try to get your message out and then they block you and then your message doesn't get out. So hopefully those people will come back and begin to respond and, um, read the uh, posts and this commentary. Anyway, I can be found at www.calease-writer.com. -E -E Please subscribe to my website. That way you'll get all of the essays as I do them. I usually do like once a month, that kind of thing. It's not like I'm like this prolific writer. I'm retired, so I'm not really trying to do so much writing. But anyway, let's get to this essay. It's called Words Within the Context of White Supremacy, Color, Tools, Humanity, Superiority, and Comfort. It's a, an essay that I originally wrote uh, back in, on July the 8th in 2016. Oh no, 2015 actually. And, um, but I wanted to do a video essay of it to accompany it as a compliment to it. So let's get started. I have always maintained that the system of white supremacy is to power like fish are to water. The color black is simply used as a tool to divide the white and non-white people on the basis of skin color. Just as the color blue 
is used as a tool to divide the classes of white people on the basis of bloodlines, like as in blue bloods. The really sad part about it all is that white people really believed the lie about being better than other humans simply on the basis of color and have accepted their red blooded whiteness as their true nature. They have accepted their status with the blue bloods, but revel in their supposed supreme status over black people through the centuries. So that, that, that's what's really deep. They accept the class caste structure of subjugation on themselves but they revel in this fake superiority over everybody else. So in this, this, this supposed supreme status over black people and, and through the generations, they, they've lost, they lost their humanity in the process. That is what white supremacy does to white people. Think about that. White supremacy makes white people lose their humanity. Now, all you really need to do is look at what's going on right now with all of the gun violence and all of the murders and all of the apologies and all of the so-called uh, reasons why guns should not even be an issue, even though the you know guns are the issue and white supremacy is the issue. Um, it's because of the loss of, of, of humanity. Uh, sad. What is even sadder is the fact that they have been lulled into a false sense of security in the belief that their superior, that in their superiority, let me read that again. I think I screwed that up. What is even sadder is the fact that they have been lulled into a false sense of security in the belief in their superiority because they are afforded certain privileges and a measure of economic freedom. Another tragedy is an unrealistic sense of fear of black people. True history tells a vastly different story of white against black than the sanitized version of history has provided for white people. White people have always been the aggressors, always. White people have always been the aggressors in the story of black people. Black people have always had to accept the cost of being black and suffer bitter consequences of trying to rise up against this ideology of supremacy. The comfort, comfort of white people through the ages has been at the heart of any discussion about their history and where white people are headed in the future. I believe that it will take becoming extremely uncomfortable with themselves as a collective, acknowledging their ancestors and themselves as descendants, actually feeling the shame that they took off themselves centuries ago. and protecting it and oh and projecting it on to black people to eliminate their own cognizant dissonance or cognitive dissonance their humanity let me read that again too 
I believe that it will take becoming extremely uncomfortable with themselves as a collective, acknowledging their ancestors and themselves as descendants, actually feeling the shame that they took off themselves centuries ago, projecting it onto black people to eliminate their own cognitive dissonance and their humanity. It will take whites working to cure themselves through knowledge and understanding of the real truth behind whiteness. Behind whiteness, power, and white supremacy before they can unite with themselves in order to end the system of racism and the ideology of white supremacy altogether. Because they're not united. So that's that essay and I just want to know if anybody had any questions or comments. I'm going to read down the list of people who have joined, who have popped their heads in for a minute, might still be here and some that may not. Okay, we got David. Roshan, Leroy Glenn. Hey, L. what's going on, buddy? Um, Arthur Martin. Love you too, Arthur. <laughs> Floyd, Jesse James Williams, Sean Watson. Happy Friday. Yep, happy Friday to you too. I had therapy today, so that meant I had to put on a little mega. Just a little. And uh, do to her and um, go get worked out on, on these knees and this back. So I said, let me do a video now before I go get back into bed. Anyway, we got Dewey. Going on, Dewey. Obed. Obed. I hope I'm saying it right. Norman. Uh, Lawrence. Evina. Hector. Timothy Pinckney. Oh, I sure will, Dewey. That's it. Hey, like I said, I'm a recidivist. I know that at some point I will be back in Facebook jail. They don't give me days. They get, I mean, they don't give me like a couple hours. I get 30 days <laughs> every time. Every time. But that means I know I'm doing something right, okay? Hey, Delilah. Sharona. Did I say Timothy? Hi, Timothy. Berwin, Toron, Otis Williams, Walter Johnson. Hey, Mert. How is the book coming? I hope it's doing well. Henry Dill, N Natasha Priester. Hey, Big Kenny. Tell your wife I said I saw her as mayor of the city that you live in or township, however that's done. But I saw her. I saw it. Okay. And I've been saying this to her for a few years now that I do believe she, if she was to run, she would win. So if you're still on here, tell her I said get, get cracking because she should definitely go into politics and she would definitely become mayor. Ken Brown. Hey, Ken. Hey, buddy. Chris Smith. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fight the power is back. <laughs> Separating families and destroying babies' lives also. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Mm. You know, we say they're distractions and things like that. No, these are, some of these are concerted efforts. They're not just distractions. They are actually concerted efforts by this administration to instill fear and terror in people. It's, see, because they are going after law abiding people who are working. They're not going after the people who are uh, hiring them 
if they are not documented. And, and, and here's the thing. Anybody who gets a job knows that you have to give them your driver's license. You have to, sometimes you have to give them even more. You have to give them a social security uh, card. You have to fill out a W-4. So how are they paying these people? They're doing some illegal things themselves if they're not paying them the way that they should be and taking out taxes and things. But they don't go after these companies. They go after the people because that's what they want to do. The thing that gets me, though, is this. And this is what I want to tell my Hispanic and Latin. See, first of all, let's get this part straight. Hispanic means that you speak Spanish. Okay? That's what Hispanic means. We're talking about nationalities. We're talking about Mexicans, Guatemalans, uh, Salvadorians. We're talking about people from Central America. Okay, let's give them their ethnicity and stop trying to lump them into groups. With, I mean, lump them all together, okay, and call it race. Because we're what's going on right now is a combination of racism that affects black people and xenophobia, which is, in, which is affecting these Mexicans and other uh, Latin, um, uh, Central Americans. Um, the thing that I find that's, in, that, that, that's sad, really sad, is that it has extended now because of the desire of these powers that be to blur race. They created it. It's construct. Yeah. Granted, it is not real, except that it is believed and it's been going on for so long that it is real to me. Conflating other groups with the unique situation of African-Americans and how we fare, okay? Um, and they're just trying to lump it all together while they can, that way they can continue doing all the crap they're doing to us in background, but, and don't even have to mention that. You're going to start noticing they're, they're talking race, white supremacy and all this kind of stuff, but they're, they're going to stop. They're, they're kind of sort of, or I'm not going to say cut. They may begin to stop talking about the actual events, the things that are occurring case in point Dayton. That wasn't a race thing. He goes and kills seven people, seven black people, and his girl, and his and his sister who was dating a, a a black guy. But it isn't race. It's not a hate crime. He's not a terrorist. He's mentally ill. And that's another thing too. It looks to be like he's going full on, trying to set up a way of persecuting people who are legitimately mentally ill as well. And that really pisses me off. That really pisses me off because that's their, that's their story and they're sticking to it, that anybody who is white, who is doing all this mass shooting have to be crazy, but they're not gonna be looking for white mentally ill men they're going to be looking for everybody else who is legitimately mentally ill and stuffing them away. That's what I'm looking at. And that, that part is frightening as well. So now they've got, it's, it, you know, that old, what was that? Well, I don't even know where it came from that, that little saying that says they came first, they came for, and then they came for, and then they came for, and then they came for me. Well, guess what? White people, you better start getting a little nervous. Because they may decide with all of these, with the economic class cast that you're in and the, the unique situation you find yourselves in economically, and for any white people that are on here and any white people that might sit up here and listen to the sound of my voice, you need to understand that at some point in the not too distant future, the way that they're doing with your salaries and, and your wages and you having to fight for a living wage and all this kind of stuff, they may lump you into that pile of the poor, okay? And they got things that they're going to do with poor people too. And you may find yourself lumped up into that group, okay? 
So they're effing with the blacks. They effing with the Hispanics and Latinas, Latinos. Pretty soon. Oh, effing with the mentally ill. If I didn't know, uh, effing with the Jews. If I did not know better, I would swear we were in 1930s Germany. Anybody don't think I'm saying I'm, I'm speaking true. Get on this thing and tell me. Oh, thank you, Eileen. Hi, Eileen. I missed you too. <laughs> you missed me. <laughs> I missed you too. I missed everybody that I wasn't able to tag and get onto my Cindy Smith page. But if you, you think about it, just type in Cindy Smith. My face will pop up there and submit a friend request. And the very next time I'm in the clink, I will add you to the pile so that you can still get some of the stuff that I write or some of the, the things that I post. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's great. I, I would be really interested in reading your dissertation. I hope it's going well. I hope it's going well, Eileen. Um, and, um, you know, and then that when you get ready to defend that you'll be successful. Yeah. And yeah, and it, it, it very, very, the mentally ill are usually the victims of crime, not the perpetrators of crime. Okay. They can try to talk that dude to somebody wrote not too long ago. I think it might've even been Ken. Um, Somebody wrote where um, it must be really interesting how you can create a video game that only that 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 um, only affects white people and makes white men and turns them into mass murderers, you know, because that's what they were trying to say too that it was video games. A lot of people play video games and don't turn into mass murderers. Okay. They just will not admit to domestic terrorism of the white supremacist kind. They will not. Back in the 60s, the same sort of thing went on all the time. They weren't calling it that. They wouldn't even, they would dare not say that then. This is a first that they're actually putting those words out into the ether, out into the mainstream, that's new, okay? Because that didn't happen before, which in some way, I guess you could say it's good that they're actually acknowledging the words. Um, hi, Andrew, I'm doing fine today. I'm doing fine today. And Delilah says they are talking about going after hate speech. They are going to going to go after people who hate what they are after who they yeah who they hate who they who they who 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 disagree with them. What? It's just like um, that whole um, oh I'm starting to get a lag on this thing. Hold on. Yeah, it's a, it's it's like that uh, identity extremist supposed to be they they call them black identity extremists. I guess I'm supposed to be one of them, <laughs> you know. Um, instead of the ones who are spewing all of the violent and um, atrocious and disgusting kinds of rhetoric out there. Um, Yes. Yeah, you're right. You oh, that's something. That's something, Eileen. Uh, mentally ill women mostly kill themselves. That's true. And mentally ill men generally kill themselves. They don't kill other people. You know, that's just a convenient line to throw out there, just so that they don't have to admit to the fact that white males are more often going to be so, what, uh-oh, 
that this this thing my my internet is acting up so i see me pausing and stuff so my, don't my, you know um bear with me um you know they're they're the ones who are going to be most they're what if you profile if they were actually profiled if somebody would actually profile them they would find that they are the most inclined to uh mass murder i mean come on how many statistics do you need to see it but they don't want to admit that to themselves hi maxine how you doing yep so anyway yeah oh wait joe biden joe joey joe now for all of the joe biden he's gonna be president i love him don't talk about him people i want you to know i don't have a personal personal opinion about joe biden i am commenting on joe biden's latest statement <laughs> i don't know how many people have heard that statement joe was being joe but you have to understand that joe got some unconscious bias going on when he said <laughs> when he said poor kid poor children and Poor children can be as bright and as talented as white people, and black people, and a few other things. See, here's the thing with that. Okay, I keep pausing and carrying on, so I'm hoping that this video doesn't get real jacked up. Okay, I'll tell you. Last, last month, Comcast had to give me $57 worth of credits because of how often my internet and cable crash but anyway um here's the thing you have to assume that the golden rod is white that is the aspiration the as white is the whole problem and when he said poor what he wasn't thinking about was the fact that for generations, poor has been synonymous with black. So when he invoked the white children, it was all about race. It wasn't about class. It was about race. So he was actually being redundant in using the term poor. You see that? Because if he had not used the word white, if he said, for example, poor children everywhere non-white children specifically black children all are born with a capacity for brilliance for learning in most cases not as smart as really as smart as as though that's the top see that comes from a superior place in the head that comes from a place where you think that white is superior and everybody else is trying to get there so they're, you know, they're just as smart as. <laughs> Give me a break, Joey. Joe, Joe Biden, please. If he wants to get. Well, he's. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to get that nomination. It's already a shoe in. I mean, that's the way it works. It's, it's so it's, it's so rigged that this is everybody else is auditioning for vice president. So. With that being said, 
he better get his act together and start digging down deep and finding out where his uh, internal biases are because that statement reeked, reeked of an ideology that said, that says skin-based superiority reigns and that other children are as smart as, as though that they are the top of that rung. Hey, Michael Bryan, Kiana Barwick, Ebony Frazier, Mary Lawrence, Philip Michael, Maxine Walk. Oh, I think I said you, Maxine. I don't know. Hi, Celessa. Hey, good seeing you too. Yep, I'm back. I was I did a little short essay. If you missed the essay, you can always play this back. Might have a couple of little twinges in the internet. I hate that when it when it does that, when it lags or it stops me altogether and stuff. But hopefully it won't be too bad and you'll be able to get the whole essay. Um hey Fanny. Oh, speaking of. I'm going to have the pleasure to be on a panel with Fanny, Fanny LaFleur and there's a couple of people. Let me see if I can find this on my phone. Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can find this. I'm going to be on a panel on August the 7th. It is a Fanny LaFleur production and it is on race and racism and what you can do. She's going to have um, things that you can do. It's a video conference that you can join in on and talk to us. And let me see, hopefully I'll be able to find it. Let me get on Fanny's page because that's probably where I can find it. So just bear with me for a second because I want to read it to you. And she so graciously asked me to be on the panel and I graciously accept it. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, Yep, here it is, right here. It says, it's called Water is Wet, Racism is Real. Upcoming conference call for activists. To date, she has received donations that make it possible for five people to have their participation covered if they can't afford the fee. Okay. The online conference call is scheduled for Saturday, August the 17th, 1 to 3 Central, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. The panel of speakers will include activists, leaders, anti-racism educators, India Elaine Holland Garnett, Michael Terrence West, and of course, Dr. Cynthia Elise Smith. Those who still need to register should make a payment of $25 via PayPal to, um, get your papers and pencils out, write this down, admin at Lafleur L-E-F-L-O-R-E, -E, communications.com. That's admin at Lafleur L E F. -L -O -R -E, L O R E communications.com. The deadline to register is 5 p.m. on August the 13th, 2019. Anyone who wants to support space for others, that means that those unable to attend for the fee, can make a donation through PayPal at the same email address admin at lafleurcommunications.com. We are keeping a waiting list to allow first come, first serve for participants whose fee will be covered by a donation. As coordinator host of the conference, Fanny will send all registered participants a private link by email to attend the August 17 online meeting via Zoom, which offers both audio and video options in real time. Any additional questions, send a private message to Fanny LaFleur through Facebook Messenger. This promises to be really interesting. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. 
um i think we're going to do like a little a short each of us will have like a short presentation or something uh, and then we'll have questions and answers and things like that um it's prom and then fanny is going to go into uh the meat of activist work in this regard okay so that's that also Oh, you know what? I wanted to say, uh, anybody that's on here right now, please feel free to share um, and 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 go to my, this is going to be on my YouTube page. Get on my YouTube page, Dr. Cynthia Ali Smith. The doctor is in. Look for that one because I had two, but the other one was more like for when I was uh, writing books and stuff. Got a couple of interviews on there, but the one that I want you to look at is the one that uh, is called The Doctor is In and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to start building the channel. I'm noticing that as you build the channel, you get more perks, you get opportunities within YouTube that I wasn't aware of before, okay? So yeah, get on there and look at the videos and that type of thing and share it and also subscribe. And remember to subscribe to my website too, because I want to get the word out, you know? And I'm doing it for free, so why not get the word out? Oh, oh, Fanny, that 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 that's fine. Listen, anything. I mean, you know, hey, Michael Epps, Mary Lawrence. I don't want to miss anybody. I don't know who all is still on because that eyeball over there. I don't even pay that thing no mind because it shows me on the side who's in and who's not, or who who got on. I'm not sure how many people, it says four people are watching. So I'm not sure if people have just clicked on and then clicked off, but thank you for popping in and do share the video and let others um, get a hold of it and listen to it and watch it. Um, if anybody, if nobody has any questions or there's no comments or anything like that, any additional comments, um, I guess I'll be heading on out then and uh, getting back in my bed. I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm back. The doctor is back. I'm out of jail. They had me in here for 30 days. Thank goodness for aliases that they haven't caught. Because I can still get on and still send my message. I, can't, I couldn't get on my, my formal page or anything like that. But do also head over there. C period Elise Smith. That's my formal like page. Get on over there and like it. Okay. Get over there and like that page. Because <laughs> that's another thing too. Oh, thank you, Kiana. You were waving. Let me see if I can like that comment. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh, I do. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm, I'm actually going to therapy twice a week now, uh, Delilah, for my, for my knees and for my back because that's what's got me disabled right now and uh, basically permanently disabled because uh, my weight won't even allow me to get the, the operation at this time. Yeah, and it's getting kind of difficult to lose this mess. I mean, I'm not eating like I'm, I'm not eating crazy or anything. I eat right. But, you know, it seems like it just won't go away. Just wait. Back in those days where I could lose it. And uh, lose large amounts. Uh, those days seem to be over. And I ain't really got a whole lot more time. I don't want to yo-yo. And I know it takes time to lose, but it's not as though I have a whole heck of a lot of time here on earth to do it. This thing is lagging again. I'm going to get ready and get off because my internet connection is jacked. Yeah, it keeps going in and out. So I'm going to get ready to get off. Thank you all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you all for coming in, for popping in. Do share the video. I'll be doing other ones. I'll be doing some more writing and I'll be doing my video presentations again. Um, hey, Michael. Hey, I'm glad you did come on, Michael, because before I got ready to go, let me let me let me throw out another pitch there. Uh, the Michael Gay Show, Raucous. 
at times, chaotic sometimes. Um, but it is a very interesting and um, enlightening show on politics, entertainment, um, pop culture. We talk about, it's a talk show on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time um, on the Blog Talk Network and J. King Network. And we talk about everything, everything that is current in the news, even some things that are not so current. Like one week I talked about cigarette smoking and the three addictions associated with it. We had guests, like we had the remarkable Lee Bailey of uh, EUR Web and the old radio, radio scope with his deep melodic voice. Um, and he was on for an interview. So we have people that come in and interview and talk to us and we talk to them and, and it's a good show. And so I would recommend that people tune in on Saturdays at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time and 3 p.m. Pacific time on the Blog Talk Network. Look for the Michael Gay Show. I'm a co-host. <laughs> uh, thank you, Fanny. I, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. Although I did do a video on my other page, though, on my, on my alias page, because I was, um, I forget what I was talking, just talking about all kinds of stuff on there. I don't think I had an essay. I just talked about a whole lot of crap. A whole lot of stuff, yeah. Mainly why I was in jail, but that you know it's a trip to be like when you, I, when you build a family, which is kind of sort of what this is. Um, it it you do you miss everybody, you know. There are people that I that I because I I don't know them personally. Um, and I might only know them by name. Sometimes their names escape me when I get on my alias page. So I'm like looking through to grab this one, grab that one. I was throwing all these ad, ad, ads. And then, you know, I got a couple of messages that asked, are you, you know, because while I could, I could get on the other page, I couldn't do anything on it. So I could see things. And so on Messenger, I was on the, on the, on my page laptop i was seeing messages is this you i think you've been hacked is <laughs> but i couldn't respond to them to let them know no it's me it's me i'm in jail this is what they count <laughs> i mean that's what i had to do it was like no it's me it's me you know so i would tell friends mutual friends let your mutuals let our mutuals know that they got me again i'm bagging the clink but i'm out again I don't know for how long, but I am free once more. So we'll see. I have a tendency, you know. <laughs> I have a tendency to get put in jail. They say it's because of this thing right here and these fingers. And I get to typing. I'm going to say what's on my mind, okay? I am going to say what's on my mind, and I'm going to give it to you unbleached. Speaking of which, one of my essays got on EUR Web. So if you get on my page, you'll see I put a post up there that um, Mr. Bailey uh, asked me if he could take one of my essays and my videos and put it on his news page, on his news platform. I said, sure. The more the merrier. So I do have, I put the, the one on racism, the just the one that defines and describes the the what, the the how and the um, evolution of racism on there. And I, I recommend that people read that or watch the video on YouTube. It's called racism. Um, iterate, I don't you know. I can't never remember the title. Hold up. Wrote the thing, can't remember the title. It's racism, evolution, iteration, and revision. 
Yes. Look it up. Racism, evolution, iteration, and revision. It is very important because that is the foundation. If you know what it is, how it operates, and how it has evolved, its iterations over time, then you get a better grasp of everything that's going on right now. You don't have to be confused about everything that's going on right now. Grace, stop singing. Come on now, you were doing good before. You'll get a better grasp of everything that's going on right now. And also, um, I have one on, um, that I, I think I have one on the three C's of, no, that, that has to do with something. I'm getting ready to do one on uh, the three C's of navigating racism. Not the one on, not the one that, that I did the video on recently. It's another one that I have. I don't know what that title is. I'll get it um, and I'll post it. Um, we have to start understanding this language that we are speaking. Okay, we're throwing all these words around without understanding the connotations, without understanding the context, and that whole word understanding, which is comprehension. So we're not comprehending, we're not understanding the context, and we're not understanding the connotations that we feel as a result, okay? And we're, not, and we're feeling things that may not be necessarily um, what we should be feeling or we're not feeling what we should be feeling you know what i mean so it's important to understand those three things look them up context comprehension connotation look them up okay i just have to post i'm actually just have to post that um that essay onto my website, the written one. I think I do have, I think I did talk about it. I think I read it, but I don't know whether I actually uploaded it to YouTube. It's very, very important for you to start understanding, getting things in within the right context and so that you can, under, you can feel the right, what was, what's supposed to be expressed from that, from those words that you're reading writing, hearing, or, uh, or, or saying, or someone is saying to you, okay? Even when I'm talking to you, you know, I do a lot of deep diving. I do a tremendous amount of deep, deep thought. I, you know, I have had a couple of people tell me I got to read, I, I had to read it twice. I had to read it three times, but I got it. And that, that means that you're deep diving. You're going in and you're making you think. And that's my, hey, what's up, Jules? I hope you're still on. This thing just keeps on going real slow. So I don't know what's making it go slow. It's just ridiculous. It's driving me nuts, the internet. But anyway, I'm going to get ready and go. I'm going to come back again soon. Um, remember to like and share, as always. Um, Oh, thank you. I'm getting all these little emojis. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and think. Now more than ever. Now more than ever. It's very important to pay attention. Think about what is being said. Watch what's being done. This boy. He's going to keep singing. I'm not going to mess with him. My baby, he did, he, you know. <laughs> My Grayson. Grayson. The nanny told you. Now, nanny told you I was doing the video, right? Yeah. And I said you'd have to be quiet, right? Okay, so you're going to have to tone down the singing just a little bit, right? For me? I know it don't matter to you. You're going to do it anyway. Anyway, hi, Anna. Hi, Anna Jaggers. How you doing? <laughs> you know what? It tickles me. 
Every time I say I'm getting off, somebody else gets one. <laughs> Every time I say, well, I'm going to get to really wind down and say I'm going to get off. <laughs> somebody else gets on the way. <laughs> Share with your friends, you know, in real time. Maybe we can get some more people on because I know what ends up happening is a lot of times people say, oh, damn, I missed it. I had to work and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's going up. It's going to go up on Facebook. So um, it will, you know, you'll be able to get it and share it with your friends and maybe do a watch party or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, getting back to what I was saying on a serious note. Now, more than ever, more than ever, you got to think think okay don't just parrot don't just parrot with this one saying and what that one's saying because you're not thinking all right if you just listen to something someone says and then that becomes your talking point you're gonna be just like trump because that's what he does meaningful firearm registration or some bs meaningful firearm legislation meaningful you know that's all that's his talking point you know says oh, okay i'm sorry i'm actually listening while getting my hair done ah <laughs> great <laughs> that's anna yeah i love getting my hair done too i got mine done set what was it last saturday last saturday because it was like i was doing my i was doing my lion king girl i was doing lion king it was like way out here so i got it blown out <laughs> it's hard it's tech um my hair is actually harder to manage when it's in its natural state than when it's blown out because all i need to do is just take a brush and brush through it but when it's when it's in its natural state it'll get real matted and break so i keep it in a braid when it's in its natural state and this is kind of sort of natural all i do is take the blow dryer and, bl and dry it that's all with the brush you know they take the blow dry and they bl dry it with the brush that's all and then they take the curlers and they curl it all up. Not they, my my dear friend Ava does that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, does anybody have any questions about or 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 comments about the essay uh, at all? Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you. Yeah, my hair is long now. It wasn't always this long i used to wear my hair um and what they used to call back in the 70s the butch cut i don't know what they still call it the butch cut it was like super duper short like maybe that short like just really really short like really really short like you, all i had to do was brush it like a boy brush your hair like a boy so i do and then uh, in the 90s, my hair was short again, and I wore uh, just a little bit. I think I had about this much. And I used to put this stuff called uh, by Sebastian called wet in my hair, and it would make it wet. It made it hard as a rock, but it would make it look like it was wet. And it looked really nice. It was really nice. People, I looked, I looked, I looked foreign when I uh, would wear that, that wet. And then I got braids and I wore a series of braids for three month intervals for nine months. And when I took those, my hair was like this. When I took those braids out after nine months, my hair was, wait a minute, let me see if I can, my hair was like this, uh, like to about here, to about here. And then I started going to Ava, and um, who is now at Hair for You on 16th and South Streets in Philadelphia, and um, 
my hair just started growing. She she's all about natural hair. No creamy crack for me. <laughs> None of that perm crack. Yeah, my daughter's hair was thick like that. It's not as thick as it used to be because she's getting older. But uh it takes hours. Yeah, it used to take my used to take her hours to get her hair dry and stuff. It doesn't take me that long to get mine dry anymore. My hair used to be super duper thick. It used to be really thick, but it's not as thick. As I got as I get older, my hair thin gets thinner. Yep. But um I don't want to just be sitting here talking about hair and stuff. I want to, you know, get ready and get off of here. Um everybody. Um stay safe. Look at that. See that? Damn it. <laughs> Every time I get ready to wind down and get off, somebody else joins. Hi, John. John Blaze. <laughs> How you doing, John? Um, do you have any questions or comments for me? I'm I'm fresh out of jail and uh fresh out of Facebook jail. Michael Washington, hello. Oh, that's okay. You you know what? Um, you uh, Anna, you'll be able to see it after I post it, and you'll be able to comment in real time. I'll be able to um, I'll, I'm after every after every video, I always get back on here and I respond to everybody's posts. Any additional questions or anything like that, or I'll throw an emoji or whatever just to acknowledge that I saw what you wrote. Um, I do that for everyone, every video. So. You know, um, if you, you know, if you want to look at it later, that you it'll be up later for you to see. Okay. Anyway, um, if there are no no questions or comments, the video was um, about racialized. You know, it it was about words, words like comfort and supremacy, superiority. Uh, tools like color and things like that, tools and color and humanity and all of those words together. I kind of just kind of blended those words together to kind of paint a picture of a crisis for white people that they have to solve. This they problem. This mess right here. You know, I, I'm going to get off, but I just wanted to mention this because it just popped into my head. I don't know how many people have saw Eddie Gloud, my my secret passion, <laughs> the professor from Princeton, who comes on MSNBC. He gave a very heartfelt uh, recitation about racism and, and, it's, and how, you know, we're in a reckoning period now. We're at a flashpoint, basically, again that this is generational, which it is. This mess always rears its head generationally. The only generation that it didn't um, manifest itself in terms of color was during the post-racial colorblind era. But it was during that time that we got slammed on content of your character because we were tossed in jail for minor crimes. That's when we became criminals as a part of our character. Okay, I did a, I did a, there's a video presentation and an essay on um, where I kind of talk about Martin Luther King's speech and how, you know, mockery being the one of the most typical behaviors of white supremacist racists um th that perhaps that whole speech they decided to use that content of your character aspect uh oh, of the way that we would want to be presented um and 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 basically defined our character as criminal during the uh, 80s and the 90s so so now here we are again at another flashpoint where but this time color is back like it was in the 60s the generations 
it just keeps coming back in one way or another but it's not it's not coming back because we wanted to come back this is what you need to understand <laughs> this crap does not come back because black people want it to come back we are always at the tail we are always paying you know uh bearing the brunt of this bs when it comes back this is white people's problem you got to stop making it come back get rid of it and it won't have to keep coming back yeah. get rid of it and it won't keep coming back yeah i do too anna i have a diver very diverse family my grandson uh my grandson grayson's mom is is caucasian and um i have spanish in my family i have um i have i have a whole lot of different nationalities and whatnot in my family it's very diverse <laughs> that's another cold word actually <laughs> Yeah, but I have I have a number of different nationalities in my family. Blended very well. Blended very well. Do I think Joe Biden? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. Do you think Joe Biden? Do you think Biden is a is a racist given his most recent statement? Okay. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna, you know how you have loaded dice? That's a loaded question. I'm gonna take the load out of the question. Joe Biden has unconscious biases. That's what he has. Is he racist? In the same sense that, or, or position you would place Trump? Because it's a spectrum. Individual racist behavior falls on a spectrum and you have to understand that. You have to understand how spectrums work. You have all the way over on the right hand side of that spectrum, you have that mass killer who killed all those people in Dayton, Ohio and in El Paso, okay? And I'm I, I digress a little bit when I talk about El Paso because El Paso was more xenophobic, but now because they're blurring the line between race and nationality, um, I'll include that, okay, as a racist act because I'm sure if he found a whole bunch of black people and they just shot them too, okay. Um, anyway, then all the way on the left, you've got and I don't want to say liberal, okay? Because that's neither here nor there. You've got people who genuinely, genuinely feel that human beings are connected and are one, okay? Now I'm talking about white people. On the far end, you've got that mass murderer terrorist on the other end, way over on the left hand side, you got the really genuine, I didn't grow up in an atmosphere like that. My parents did not raise me that way to see black people as inferior. My, my family didn't raise me that way. Um, you've got, um, but if you live in this country and this world and you are white, you have unconscious bias. It can't be helped because it is drummed, drilled, ingrained into your brain from the moment you come out of the womb. Sometimes it manifests itself not in terms of a skin-based ideology, but it will manifest itself in an exceptionalist ideology. We are the greatest country in the world. America, the greatest. We, that's all Trump talks about. 
We do. We the greatest at this. We're the greatest at that. America is the greatest, greatest, greatest. We are the best. Can nobody be us? And then you get all of the subtleties that come in between. Okay? And you're going to get unconscious bias. You're going to get it. It's just the way it is. So are, you know, are all white people racist? If you take that spectrum, you have this over here, and then you just keep ticking it off. Tick, 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 tick. Until you get all the way on the other side. Where does Biden fit? I would say that Biden fits somewhere in the middle. This is why people call people like him centrists. This is why I say you have to have an understanding of the words that are being used. You're gonna hear this a lot in politics, centrist politics. Joe Biden is a centrist. This politician is a centrist. That's what it means. It means on that spectrum between I really wish this mess wasn't really happening, but you know, it is what it is kind of thing over here. And then over here on the right, you got, you know, on the, on the, you know, on the other side, you got, I want to take them all down. They're trying to invade our country. He's in the center. He's in the center. Trust and believe that during that period of time when he was okaying a lot of the things that were being done in terms of segregation back then, and you know the things that he was voting on that were detrimental ultimately to black people that's where he was and if and that's because you know he was making laws to complement other laws you know law and order laws and things like that trust and believe that if he ever found himself in a situation where he Basically, I think that he would follow the law, no matter what the law is. So if the law is segregation, he would be down for that. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think that he would be like a Bernie San Sanders who would be out there marching and fighting against that, which is what Bernie did during the civil rights movement. And that's not to say that Bernie has not shifted somewhat in his view with regard to um, uh, black people and their rights. He has a he he actually is trying to appeal more to an an economic commonality, which does not include all of the other institutions for which uh, black people are in danger. You know, be in 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 justice. You know, has no economic bearing. Uh, um, if, if you know, the richest black man in the world could still get stopped and thrown on the ground and tased and ultimately murdered by a police officer, if that officer decides that it, he wants to kill him for whatever reason. So, you know, having money has nothing to do with some of those other institutions that we have to deal with. Um, okay. Um, I hope the next generation of young people, though, yeah. 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 George Wallace. Hmm. Yeah. George Wallace was an interesting character. He was a segregationalist. He was a rape man. He was, while he was not on that far end with the, he was further along than Biden. He was, he was more right, much more on the right than Biden. That's what they mean by the left and the right. The spectrum because racism is so tightly woven into the fabric of this nation that this is the way that they speak. 
you just don't know that this is what they're talking about because they use other terms to describe it. They'll use left, they'll use right, they'll use liberal, they'll use conservative, they'll do they'll say everything else but what it really is until now <laughs> they're starting to call it what it to, to call some of the things what they are uh somebody wrote okay um you have white black many latino dominican oh okay and carl ewing hi carl ewing he says, I truly think that the chickens will come home to roost to Trump for the seeds of hate he has been sowing. You're absolutely right. I think the chickens are going to come home to roost for that. And I think that it's going to have a lot uh, larger set of implications for the country because whoever gets in here is going to have to get this country back to at least, at the very least, going to have to get this country back to a place where it's the, the, the open hostility of white against black and other non-white uh, ethnicities, you know, goes down. Because right now, um, the animosity of, of, of some of these white people toward black people and other non-white entities, I mean, ethnic, ethnicities, for no reason except for the rhetoric is so dangerous and just absolutely ridiculous. Um, you said, I think his comment was a poor kid's not African-American. Um, that would be true, Anna, if he had not invoked the word white. Because if he was talking in general, he would not have been specific. He would not have said poor children are, um, poor children are, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, talented and smart or whatever, to, to paraphrase, as white people. You see what I'm saying? So he's differentiating poor from white. This is why I said you got to understand, you got to get get with the context, get with the connotation, get with the comprehension, because that, when he said that, and then he, then he added black on, what he was doing was he caught himself. That's why he added black. But the thing is, people who understand dog whistles understand that poor since since the late 20th century has been synonymous with black that's the truth of the matter and that is because poor white people are invisible to white people and that was part and parcel of that problem within the white economic class caste of white people who are at the bottom ends of the rung and they're saying, wait a minute, we ain't black. Where's our privilege? <laughs> okay? Because they're considered invisible. See, that, that, this gets into a whole nother big thing that, I could, that I've talked about uh, on other occasions. But he made that mistake when he said what he said. This, this group, poor, are as smart as as what as 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 white people as white children so that puts these children up here and puts everybody else down here and he's trying to say but you're smart as but you got to be down here in order to be at to come up to as that's superiority thinking that is deep set in unconscious bias that is dictating his speech. But like I said, he, he called himself catching himself, but he ended up just being redundant because people who think, people who, I mean, people who, who caught that dog whistle realize, uh-oh, he just messed up. Hi, Jill. Hi, my Jill. Hi, my Jill. How's my Matt 
doing? <laughs> How Dr. Matt doing? You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, you got me. You you got me. Yep. Yep, that's true. I mean, so you so you see where he really he kind of messed up because he he set a bar right here. And then what you doing, Moody? What you doing, Moody? That's my mood in the back there. Trying to act like he don't like don't nobody see him. We see you really well. We see you, Moot, because you always manage to get up in these videos. We see you. That's my moody poop. <laughs> I sometimes miss him, but I know people can see him behind me doing stuff. And then my mind goes over to that side of the bed and I catch him. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so he, he set a bar and and then was trying to say, but but they you you know they black people you 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 can be you you not can be but but you just as smart as white people. Man. Yes. Hi mom. Hi. <laughs> I'm doing a video. Oh nice. Yeah. Hi. Just checking in. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Oh, thank you, darling. We went to we, I went to therapy. I took Moot. Okay. That's the rest of his lunch right there. He ate his. Get your snack, too, Moody. You going downstairs? Oh, he ate them. Oh, okay. You, don't mind me. I'm getting <laughs> talking to the greatest mommy. Is this like garbage or? No, I think he's still got some oh, in there. I think okay. he's still got food in there. Awesome. Thank you. I know he's got a burger because he didn't eat that, but yeah. he's got um. Also, I think got a few more nuggets and some fries in there, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Right, you want to go to Bob's for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be up there. I'm going to jump off. Got to rinse out. Okay. All righty, Anna. Huh? All right. Okay, Anna. Oh, yeah. You saw my moody? <laughs> that's my, that's my, that's my road dog right there. We go everywhere together. He rides with me and he's such a little, he's so sweet. He opens the doors for me and everything. Just a, just a wonderful little boy. He bad as hell though. <laughs> oh, I love him to death. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to get ready to get off of here. I said, oh, Jesus, here we go. Lewis Fuller, Henry Smith, hello. You got everybody always jumps on after I'm getting ready to get off. But um, I've been on here now for a minute, an hour and 17 minutes. Do look at the video. The beginning actually has the essay. The rest of this is just kind of ad-libbing stuff. Um on on certain topics and then one point i talk about my hair so um <laughs> but the, the the gist of 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 the essay is is in the beginning of this uh and it, um so the first say half hour is devoted to that okay um i'm gonna get off of here for real this is the last of it <laughs> thank you for jumping on everybody who's jumped on I'm going to get off of here now. Uh, God bless everybody. May the force be with you. <laughs> um, think, think, think. Pay attention. These are some very, very difficult times. We are at a flashpoint, all of us. And we have to stay vigilant. And we have to pay attention. And remember, navigating. Use comprehension, context, connotation. Look them up if you don't know what they mean. Look them up, put them all together and see where they come together. And you'll be able to better understand and navigate the system of white supremacy and racism. All right, Dr. Cindy is almost positively gonna be out. As soon as this PC stops acting silly, Dr. Cindy out.